Hello and welcome back to our online multiplayer series. In this episode we're going to go through and show you how to make players die when they run out of health and be able to respawn back into the game repossessing their new characters. So first of all we need to be able to kill our characters. Now this is going to be handled on their third person character. So we go to third person character and in there we are doing the damage event here. Now, the damage event, remember, is only happening on the server, so clients don't understand what damage is being done. So it's here that we want to tell the server to determine whether or not a player has died. Remember, server is king, and the server should decide all that happens. So here the server is going to decide whether or not a player should be killed. So we're going to look at their health, and we're going to take this out and check if it's beneath or equal to zero. And that will go into a branch. Now if it's true, we're going to call a new function, and that's going to be the player's death. So we're going to make a new custom event, and we call it player died. Now the player died event needs to happen on all the clients, because they all need to see that that player has died. So we need to replicate that across all clients and servers. So on here, we're going to change the replicates here to multicast. Okay, so now we go back up to where we check in our health value, and if it's true, we want to call that player died function. So the server determines whether or not a player has died, and if it has, then we're going to update all the clients that a player has died. Now the player that has died here is going to be uh, changing their into ragdoll. So let's go through the ragdoll process. So here we're going to take the mesh for the character, and we're going to set collision enabled and you want to change that to be physics only um, still with the mesh you want to drag this out and set collision object type and set it to physics body and then we want to drag from the mesh again and set simulate physics Make sure you tick the box. So what's happening here is we're telling the mesh to have a physics, uh, use its physics uh, asset. Then we're telling it to, it's going to be a physics body type. And then it's going to simulate the physics so it drops to the floor. So if I hit compile on this and just push play. And let's shoot one of the characters. You can see how they stomp to the floor. And because it's being multicasted across all actors, you can see it in all viewports. Notice how the laying and position of the character is slightly different in each one. That's because physics is not simulated. It, uh, I'm sorry, it isn't replicated across clients. It is just simulated in their own individual client. So what you're seeing is their own interpretation of what the physics engine is actually doing. So there will always be some discrepancy with physics. Okay, let's go into the rest of it. So back on our player character, we're doing this. We then want to take away the player's input controls. So we're going to disable movement. And the character movement component. And then we're going to set up a timer. And the timer is going to be the respawn timer. So we're going to do set timer by event. And the event we're going to come down and do a custom event here and call this respawn character and the time is how long you want it to take for the respawn i'm going to take five seconds i'm going to take this return value and store it as a value because it's always useful to have that respawn timer and there you go so once that timer has expired, what's going to happen is we're going to send an instruction to request a respawn. Now, as I always say, server is king. So what is actually happening when you do a respawn is that you're requesting from the game mode a chance to respawn. But that's going to have to come from the player uh, controller because as the player dies, that character won't exist. We're going to remove them from the game. So we have to go to the player controller and the player controller is going to send that data over to the game mode. So, before we carry on with the respawn here, we need to go into the player controller. Let's go into player controller. And in here, we need to set up a respawn requ uh, request. So, we go into custom event. And we're going to go respawn 
pawn and in the respawn pawn we're going to uh, get the game mode and ask to send an instruction to the game mode so the game mode is where the respawning actually is happening let's go to game mode in there make a custom event and we're going to call this custom event respawn requested and the respawn requested has to come from a controller first of all so make a new input and that'll be the player controller input and choose the type here player controller and we also need a spawn location so I'm going to go to inputs here and add a spawn transform which is going to be a transform type this is going to be where they spawn this is going to be who's controlling the spawn so respawn requested we're going to come out of there and make sure it only runs on server because the game mode is in control of the server so I'll replicate change that to run on server next we need to tell it to spawn it now before we do that we're going to check the player controller is a valid reference so drag this out and just do it is valid just to make sure there is still a valid player and they haven't left the game next we're then going to go switch as authority now this node will determine whether or not the thing that's running this code has authority to run it and if it's authority then it means it's a server if it's remote it means it's a client so we only want the server to do this so on the authority we're going to come over here and spawn actor from class and we're going to choose our third person character now we have to determine what the spawn transform is that's going to come from our spawn transform here and then we need to take this return value and possess it by this controller now whenever you do respawn a character it's a good idea to give it a, a slight second break in order for any lag issues to uh, to resolve so in here we're going to come out and do a little delay delay by like 0 0.2 totally fine doesn't matter it's a small number and then we're going to tell it to possess now the possession is going to come from this controller so drag this controller out and do possess and the pawn is going to come from the return value on our character here Hit compile and save so this is the respawn request that's going to come through from a controller so let's go back to our controller and look at the respawn pawn in there we're going to get the game mode cast to our third person game mode and then from there we're going to call that respawn request with the player controller being itself and the spawn transform going to be coming from actually this node here so I'm going to click on here and add a new input and we're going to do spawn transform and do vector oh, sorry transform and plug that in there compile and save so the last thing we need to do is make sure the respawn pawn here is set to replicate only on the owning client that way only the one that is running that pawn running that uh, controller sorry can request it Hit compile then go back to your third person character now we've got this respawn character here so we're going to get the player controller we're then going to cast to our custom player controller so then we can call that respawn pawn code we need a spawn transform uh we'll get that from our begin play so the spawn transform can happen anywhere at any point so it can happen on here it can happen on the controller it can happen in game mode you can control where you want it to spawn in our example here we're going to make it respawn back at its starting location so we need to first of all get that starting location so on the begin play of this actor at right at the start we're going to get the actor's transform and we're going to store that as a variable that way we've now got their starting position that we can call upon later on so we're going to go spawn transform and plug that in that begin play so right at the start it gets that 
then we plug that into our respawn request over here it gets sent over so with that in there now we now want to tell it to unpossess and that way it will let go of it uh in the player controller so we just to plug in the player controller from here like that um, so a couple of things we need to add to this uh, first of all is we only want it to do the respawn character on the owning client so whoever owns this current pawn uh, client wise can run it so what we're going to do is do first of all a switch on here make sure that the server is given an instruction here to set the timer so that would go to there and then we want to change the respawn character here to use the owning client replication now what we can how you can do that if you've got it plugged into this event here because it doesn't show up here if you just disconnect it and click on it again it will now show you can then change it to owning client and you should be able to plug it back in like that um hit compile and let's go back to the player controller and we actually want this one respawn pawn to be executed on server because again server should be the one telling what the game mode should be doing so execute on server is on respawn pawn on the player controller. Let's compile and save that and uh, let's see how that looks. So here we've got the clients in the small windows and you've got the server here in the big window. And as I shoot the character, they fall to the floor. You see this character here. After five seconds, a new one should spawn and I will now have control over this one. You'll notice that a few things need to be changed still. Uh, we still need to get rid of the capsule collision because it's still there. I can't walk through it. And we also need to update our health bar on the screen. Uh, so that is replicated as well to refresh and restart. So let's go through those things. First thing we do is get rid of the capsule collision. The capsule collision we'll do over here where we're doing the physics stuff on the ragdoll. I'm going to just move that all aside a little bit and we're going to tell the capsule collision to have no collision on it the set collision enabled and change that to no collision that's that part done next we need to tell our ui to update and reflect the update so we're going to go to the player unit frame which is the ui here and we need to make a part of this able to uh, replicate uh, not replicate but um, be recalled okay so in here we're going to make a bound event bound to that respawn so the bounding binding we're going to do is on the player controller so on the player controller I've added this event dispatch called respawned it's just a simple click add and then type in respawned and we'll have that there then go to the player unit frame and as custom player controller you can now call that uh, or bind rather that respawned event. So whenever that is called by the code in a second, it will run a new event here. So I'm going to run a new event here and do custom event and call it uh, respawn refresh. And in here, we need to basically redo this latter half of the thing here because the third person character and player pawn don't actually exist anymore. So we need to update that to get the new one. So the new one is set by the uh, player pawn, which is got from the characters and so forth. Now the easiest way of doing that is taking the other custom player controller and get controlled pawn. From there, we can then cast to our third person character and this part is going to look basically identical to here we're just going to grab this set here plug that in and then we're going to reconnect this line up to get player name it's going to reconnect up to the main path there so we've got respawn being triggered by the bound event to respawn and then it's going to get the new control to pawn also the correct character and the story as that variable so now all the connections will work again we compile and save that and then we just need to call this respawned event so that's going to happen on the game mode it's going to go to the game mode and after we possess it we're going to take the controller so i'm just going to add a reroute node here and we're going to cast that to our custom player controller 
we want to go back to the controller and we although we have this call respawn here we want to call it in a multicasted replicated event here so we're going to create a new custom event and we'll call this one refresh hud and on here we'll make it replicated to multicast now the reason why we want to do this is because when we call it on the game mode only the server is going to call it and then we want the server then to tell it to replicate it to everyone so that everyone calls this code if they are relevant so here we're going to call our respawned node here and file then go to the game mode and at the end after this possession when you cast the gate custom player controller uh, from the object here and then as custom player controller we're going to call that refresh hud pin now what this will do it will refresh everyone's hud accordingly um, but what it's all all it's doing is updating who it's uh, tied to so it's not going to have any effect on anyone else's really apart from those who have died so let's test this out now if i go to push play so when i am um, the server here and i shoot this character their health will deplete and they will respawn moment there you go and repossess their their pawn and if i shoot the server they too will respawn with their new pawn so and uh, as you notice if we pick up some score here so if i pick up um points there so i've got 10 points on the server if i shoot the server you'll notice that when they respawn they keep their score because we're storing score somewhere else so their health is going to be updated but the score is going to stay the same this is why you want to separate score from health uh not having on the same character um but yeah and there you go so we now have characters that can die and respawn um, and that kind of kind of bring us close to the end now of this first part of this online multiplayer series. Uh, we've covered quite a few generic options inside online multiplayer. There's obviously a lot more we can do with specific game modes and specific game types. Uh, but we've covered the basics. If there's something specific that you want to know how to replicate, leave a comment below. I'll be interested to see what people want. If there's something that a lot of people are interested in, we may make extra video parts for that. But right now, we've covered pretty much everything to do with replication for basic game mode. We've got characters that can spawn, die, respawn. We've got things you can pick up, things you can keep track of score. Uh, we've got health bars that are replicated as well. Plus, interactables like doors and things like that also work. But if there's anything else, please let me know. Now there is going to be a second uh, half of this uh, online multiplayer series which is going to be sort of a sister series which is going to be covering how to actually connect to other players and get working so rather than just working on this sort of uh, local LAN that we've got going on here we will actually show how to connect remotely to actual other players uh, through uh, servers and IP addresses and things like that. So look forward to that series it will be coming out soon hopefully. Uh, thank you very much to all my patrons for their continued support. If you want to watch other videos of mine well before anyone else, please head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can watch all those videos plus much more from just $1 a month. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help me out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.